I'd like to say great day to the viewing audience. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit. My name is Dr. Stefan Williams and I will be your host for today's program. We're going to continue on with our series entitled, A Condensed Explanation About Hell. And those of you that are watching this broadcast today, I would like for you to get out your Bibles, your notebooks, your pens, your pencils, your highlighters, and study with us. Let's continue on with the series. I need you to zero in right here for the viewers. This well, certainly get it go good, clean, and clear from here. Don't miss nothing missing out. Now. I'm going to be reading Acts, the second chapter, verses 25 through, excuse me, I'm going to be reading Acts, the second chapter, verses 22 through the 35th, fifth, through the 35th verse. Once again, I'm going to be reading Acts, the second chapter, verses 22 through the, through the 35th verse from the Holy Name Bible. It says, Ye men, sons of Israel, hear these words, Yahshua of Nazareth, a man approved of Yahweh among you by miracles and wonders and signs <clears throat> which Yahweh did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. Him, being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of Yahweh, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom Yahweh has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, having raised up, having loosed the pains of death, Because it was not possible that he should be hidden, that he should be holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I have set Yahweh always before my face. For he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in Sheol or in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy Continents. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, that he is both dead and buried, and his uh, sepulchery is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that Yahweh had sworn with an oath to him that of uh, the fruit of his loins, according to the according to the flesh, he would raise up the Messiah, raise up the Messiah <coughs> to sit on his throne. Follow, to sit on his throne. Follow over here, to sit on his throne. See him sitting there, Yahshua the Messiah. Says heaven, see him sitting there. And he's steady. He's steady getting up off of the throne there. See? Okay, seated on the throne. Here. 
It says, He seen this before, spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, the resurrection of the Messiah. You see, the forms have changed here. He's no longer in a physical body. He is back into his superincorporeal state or anthropomorphic being state, okay, as of today. Once again, he, he seen this before, spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul was not left in Sheol or hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. This Yahshua hath Yahweh raised up, wherefore we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of Yahweh exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, having received of the Father, see, follow, the promise of the Holy Spirit, it says here, baptism of the Holy Spirit, day of Pentecost, see, see the sunrise, see, it says S-O-N, not S-U-N, see, sunrise. Son is risen, ascended, and then poured out his spirit, ushered in the day of Pentecost, baptism of the Holy Spirit here. Once again, therefore, being by the right hand of Yahweh exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Let's continue on. Back here. Yeah, right there. It says that Yahshua went to hell or the grave, but did not stay there or see corruption, but preached unto the spirits in prison. I need red reader, please. No, no, excuse me. Sorry about that. I apologize. I need red reader, please. First Peter, third chapter, verse eighteen to nineteen verses, please. First Peter three eighteen nineteen from the Holy Name Bible. For the Messiah also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to Yahweh, bringing, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he preached unto the spirits in prison. Thank you, reader. Thus one can readily see that the grave or the hole in the ground is literally the explanation, once again, thus one can readily or readily see that the grave or the hole in the ground is literally, is literal explanation of hell. Furthermore, Peter said of the angels that sinned, Satan and his angels, Satan and his angels, once again, furthermore, Peter said of the angels that, that sinned, Satan and his angels, that Yahweh spared not the, the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved un, unto judgment. And that's according to 2 Peter, 2nd chapter, in verse 4. We're just showing the pictorial illustration here. It says, immersed in ethereal darkness, see, chains. It says, see, 2 Peter 2 and 4 there. See, to be reserved. 
And you see here, Archangel Michael is driven him out. You see the staff in his hand. It says here, cast out. Okay? No longer to return to the third heaven. It says, Jude, also speaking of the satanic spirit, said, And the angels which, which kept not their first estate. Once again, Jude, also speaking of the satanic spirits, said, And the angels which kept, which kept not their first estate. but left their own habitation, he has reserved an everlasting chains of, under darkness unto judgment of the great day. And that's according to the book of Jude, or Judah, verse 6. Seeing then that, that these angels were cast to hell, and remembering that Yahshua said to his, to, to his disciples, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. I need a rare reader, please. Mark, the 16th chapter, and verse 17, please. Mark 16 and 17 from the Holy Name Bible. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out demons? They shall speak with new tongues. Thank you, reader. Get right here. Just put this right here. Don't you know, miss it. Close if you can. Nothing else. Let me know you got it. It says, It must follow that these evil spirits are incarnated in physical bodies, which is another accurate manifestation of hell. So these physical bodies, ladies and gentlemen, are likened, are likened to hell or likened to the grave. Or like it to a hole in the ground. The physical body out of which Joshua cast many devils is further shown to be in reality hell with, within itself. By some remarks which the apostle Paul made when he was being tried by Ananias who had commanded that he be smitten on the mouth, Paul said, Yahweh shall smite thee, thou, thou white wall. I need a red reader, please. Acts the 23rd chapter and verse 3, please. Acts 23 and 3 of the Holy Name Bible. Then said Saul unto him, Yahweh shall smite thee, thy white wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Thank you, reader. In referring to Yahshua saying that the Yehudites, who the world calls Jews, who outwardly cleanse up themselves, but had no regard to their inner selves, or souls which were dead, were likened to white uh, sepulcheries, tombs. See? Okay? Was likened to, follow, were likened to tombs. Okay? Back here. Which indeed. It appear beautiful outwardly, but inwardly are full of dead men's bones. 
And you see here, it's how you see the bone structure. Your bones are is is a um. So I'll just say it like this: is 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 a uh, type of your soul. I need red reader, please. Matthew, the 23rd chapter, and the 27th verse, please. Matthew 23 and 27 from the Holy Name Bible. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whitened sepulchres, uh -huh. which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Thank you, reader. It says, Thus, when one's inward self or soul is dead because of sin, his physical body, ladies and gentlemen, is the grave or hell. For the evil spirits which are incarnated therein. There is yet another extended meaning of hell which relates to the mind. Paul wrote to Timothy saying, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. I need a rare reader please. 1 Timothy the 5th chapter verse 6 please. 1 Timothy 5 and 6 from the Holy Name, the Holy Name Bible. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Thank you, reader. I need, to, I need you to pull back. Just pull back. And get this whole chart. Let them miss it as close as you can. You see we see everything. Top, bottom, side to side. Got it. It says... There is yet another extended meaning of hell which relates to the mind. Paul wrote to Timothy saying, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. He is, he is referring to one's mind. One's mind being alienated from Yahweh and being darkened and set on worldly things which is a state of, or condition of hell. Okay? Once again, he is referred to one's mind being alienated from Yahweh and being darkened and set on worldly things, which is, which is a state or condition of hell. Paul support the idea of mind, being, of mind being heaven or hell, depending upon whether it was divinely illuminated. Remember the Shekinah in the most holy place. Remember the Shekinah in the most holy place. You see an eye here. See, see the Shekinah was flashed when the, when, the, when the high priest would officiate in, in this tabernacle properly. His eye represented his representative of Yahweh himself. All the all seen eye. Back up. Remember the second nine, the most holy place. It says here, most holy place here. Or not, for he said, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And anything that is dead is in hell or in the grave. And I'm going to show you a pictorial illustration of a spiritual mind and a carnal mind. It says the egotistical, misdirected directed personality, law of the spirit, science of mind. Spirituality or spiritual mind, carnality, carnal mind. All right, I'm going to read it again. To be carnally minded is death. And that is carnality is, is, is changeable. 
A carnal mind is changeable, a carnal mind has morals, a carnal mind is temporal, a carnal mind is corruptible. A carnal mind has mortality, a carnal mind is theories, a carnal mind is concepts, a carnal mind is opinion. A carnal mind is all about sight, touch, sound, taste, and smell. A carnal mind is all about an image, flesh, and death. And the final conclusion of a carnal mind is eternal damnation. The spiritual mind is spirituality. The spiritual mind is immutable. The spiritual mind is righteousness. The spiritual mind is eternal. The spiritual mind is incorruptible. The spiritual mind is immortality. The spiritual mind is proof. The spiritual mind is precepts. The spiritual mind speaks truth. The spiritual mind is Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. And it says the final, final destination is eternal glorification. It says, the above mentioned manifestations of hell are, are only child's play compared to the real hell divinely discerned and revealed by the Holy Spirit. John writes that in his vision on the incident of Patmos that the devil, the beast, and the false prophet along with the nations they deceived were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where they were tormented day and night forever and ever and that's according to Revelation the 20th chapter in verse 10. Now I can get right here for the, for the, for the viewers to give a pictorial illustration here. Let's get this here. Can it says here eschatology. It says heaven, Sabbath, seventh, sealed open. Yahshua's second coming, but it's truly Yahshua's second appear because Yahshua, Yahshua has never left. It says here judgment, clouds, resurrection, earth and heaven passed away, lake of fire, earth and water. It says lake of fire. I'm going to read that section once again for the viewers. Once again, John writes that in his vision on the Isla Patma that the devil, the beast, and the false prophets, along with the nations they deceived, were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where they were tormented day and night forever and ever. That means eternal, eternal. This was shown to John in, in, in this fashion so that mortal man might have some conception of the lake of fire. Figuratively, Figuratively, it can be shown by the tabernacle pattern, it says tabernacle pattern here, in this manner. Fire burned continuously on the brazen altar. Fire burned continuously here, out here on this brazen altar. Follow. It was at the same location. That's the lake of fire here. See at the bottom of the chart here, like unto the court roundabout. Like unto the brazen altar.
Once again, it said, now fire burned continuously on the brazen altar in the outer court, or the court round about of the tabernacle. Yahweh dwelt between the wings of cherubim, which is here, the two cherubims, the two archangels. Yahweh dwelt between the cherubims. In the most holy place, and he is a consuming fire. He Yahweh is a consuming fire. We get up here for the view just for a moment here. You see this here says Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, Yahweh the Father, Yahweh as the Son, and Yahweh as, a, as the Holy Spirit. Yahweh never separate separate at any time. Yahweh plays many roles. But you see that this cloud, see, or you can say fire, see, that's really what it is. This is who Yahweh is. Okay? So Yahweh, Yahweh, the most holy place like unto Yahweh, the holy place like unto Elohim, and Yahshua like unto the court round about. Alright? So get this back in clear. And I need your red reader, please. Hebrew, the 12th chapter, and verse 29, please. Hebrews 12 and 29 from the Holy Name Bible. For our Elohim is a consuming fire. For Yahweh our Elohim is a consuming fire. And that will conclude this, this week's series. Until we meet again next week, I like to leave with a few words. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the precious kingdom of Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.